set up a nice panel discussion with uh, three of our senior <coughs> experts in our global research and analysis team to talk about the spotnet epidemic we face and some of the legal, ethical, technological issues that are really uh, putting a crimp in, in the good guy's ability to fight back against botnets. Uh, before we start the panel discussion, I would like to invite Mr. Tillman Werner from our German office to come up and just give us a quick five minute, uh, maybe seven minute overview of the issues, uh, some of the, the, the technological and a uh, little bit of background on what the problem is, and then immediately after we'll come up and have a nice interactive discussion, and hopefully we'll get you guys to participate in the interactive discussion as well. So, Tillman, welcome. Thank you, Ryan. All right, I would like to give you a quick intro to the topic, and um, I guess all of you remember uh, what information or, uh, or infection of computers was like back in the days, right? When People were exchanging floppy disks, right? It was much like this guy sneezing here and infecting some other, some other person with a virus, okay? But with botnets, it's completely different, yeah? What we see nowadays is a much more professional and organized way of infecting machines. So what botnets or bots are doing right now is they sweep over the whole internet and try to infect as many machines, basically all machines that are vulnerable, okay? So it's a completely new dimension of a threat. And um, when it comes to, well, fighting botnets, battling botnets, there, there's a, um, first of all, of course, we have to understand the, the, the uh, dimension of the threat or the na nature of the threat. And it's important to understand that this is not um, comparable with traditional malware because it's a twofold thing, right? So first of all, we have uh, what everybody knows about botnets, right? They send out spam, they infect other machines, they can, well, you can instrument a bot um, with whatever you want to do, right? So you can, it's, there is no limitation. You can do click fraud, you can install other pieces of malware, you can do phishing, all these things. But if you have a botnet, that means you have a collective of infected machines and you can use this collective in order to do different kinds of attacks. For example, you can instruct the collective to overwhelm a third party or another site on the internet with traffic, all right? So this is what we call a DDoS attack. And um, this is what makes botnets particularly dangerous and, and, and harmful. Some of these issues Tillman talked about. To my left right here is Mr. Vitali Kamluk, uh, Chief Malware Expert at Kaspersky Lab and a member of our research team. Uh, Tillman Warner and Kostin Rayu, who is head of uh, the global research team uh, globally. Uh, I want to start off quickly with uh, the last chart. If you can let me the clicker for a second. Two years later, we have uh, Config is still uh, commanding a botnet of five million machines. Uh, uh, you know, although the botnet has kind of been neutralized, we still have five million infected computers around the world. Can you explain why this is? Well, um, I used to spend a lot of time on Configure myself. Uh, was in the beginning of the working group of Configure, and uh, I think that from um, from our perspective, we see that uh, the Configure is a malware which actually infects the system and behaves very silently. So it doesn't show up. It doesn't slow down your your system, your computer, and that is why uh, most of the users who are infected they don't even know about this malware. And as you know, you can probably uh, remember your own systems. If nothing bothers you, you just don't go and don't investigate whether there is something hidden in your system. So it's a uh, normal human logic. So the once well, the system is broken, people start checking it. But unless it's broken, unless it slows down, seriously, nobody cares. That's why a lot of people, they are not aware of the problem of that their system is infected. And that's why there are so many infections. And there are other factors like um, Configure was very successful not only in spreading over the network, but uh, over USB drives as well. And, uh, you know, it's very common problem. People still don't care. They share documents and they don't care about cleaning or checking their USB drives. The third thing is that um, there is a problem with um, updating uh, Windows XP once you install it from the distributive uh, uh, CD, uh, 
If you connect your system to the network which has at least one computer infected with configure, your system is immediately infected with the malware. So you have to install it properly, you have to install it uh, offline and then apply the patches and updates uh, taken brought probably on, on a USB drive or something because uh, this is critical. If you connect to the infected network, you are infected also before updating. From a technological standpoint, Tillman talked about the Walla case study where they were able to completely destroy that botnet uh, at some point. And there's been additional efforts in the past to do this kind of things. Uh, there's, is there some sort of difference between uh, the configure infrastructure and that? Those are the botnets that allow you to completely destroy those but uh, unable to do it in this case? So I think the main difference is that in the case of configure, there is no real uh, command and control entity we can approach, right? So um, there is this, I mean, for, the, for, for you technical guys who know, who are interested in how, how it works in detail, configure generates a bunch of domains, pseudo-random domains, and then it tries to contact these. Um, but most of the time, there's actually no, no real system behind these domains. Um, so there's no, no machine we can attack or we can approach. Right. And you mentioned in your talk about some of the, the countermeasures, uh, offensive uh, countermeasures that uh, it's possible, but in many cases it's limited by legal issues. And I want us to start off with a discussion on some of the legal issues around botnet takedown and botnet mitigation. Uh, uh, Vitali, can you give us a sense of, you know, what are some of the main things that is hamstring, that, you know, really interrupts efforts by the good guys to disrupt this botnet? So do you, uh, do you get a sense that it's, it's, a, it's a case of uh, uh, difference in laws in different parts of the world, or is it just uh, where the technology is ready, but uh, because of some, you know, uh, complicated legal issues, you just can't go that extra step. Explain, explain what stops you from taking some of those countermeasures. That yeah, that's right. Very often we run into a situation when uh, we have a technical solution of uh, taking down botnet by, for instance, issuing a self-removal command from the CNC or just, you know, pushing our own executable to clean the system or probably just, you know, holding this botnet uh, just taking over and preventing the bad guys to connect to his CNC. But technically that is possible, that is available for all security researchers. It's not only Kaspersky Lab, but the whole industry can do that. Uh, the problem is that that requires uh, sometimes active interaction with infected hosts. Means that if you issue a command from the CNC, you're kind of controlling, indirectly controlling the uh, remote user's computer and that user probably would not be happy to find one day that he, his computer or his data being modified or changed somehow by a third party that he never asked for controlling his machine. So this brings a lot of uh, legal problems. And um, formally, uh, speaking formally, this is an unauthorized access to the remote machine, which is uh, illegal in most of the countries.